Hi everybody, this is Tim Newton from the Cranet School and we're joined by Bailey Moore who is the Vice President of Wintrust Ventures. First of all, what is Wintrust Ventures? Uh, Wintrust Ventures is a venture capital program dedicated to Wintrust geography, which is Illinois, Northwest Indiana, and Wisconsin. So basically, you are trying to find some entrepreneurs, in particular high tech, or is there any a particular kind of entrepreneur you're looking for? No, we're industry agnostic, so we do a lot of tech just because that's what gets funded in Chicago, but we've done... Um, a shoe company called Bucket Feet. We've done a baby clothes company called Monica and Andy. So um, we we look at tech, we look at everything, so long as it fits our basics, which is geography, post-revenue, so the company has to have traction. We don't invest in ideas. And um, they, the companies have to be through at least one institution, what we call institutional round of funding. funding. So not friends and family, true venture capitalists. So before we talk a little bit more about Wintrust, I want to talk about your path from here. You were a 20, 2008 graduate of the Craner School. Uh, how did you wind up there? Um, at Wintrust? Yes. So I came, Or here at Purdue, either one. Or here at Purdue. <laughs> um, I actually chose Purdue because I'm from the East Coast originally. I'm from Boston. Um, at the time, I decided that I wanted to go to a Big Ten school, and Purdue had a a great program and we had a nice visit and I was 16 choosing my future and put my my blinders on and decided not to go on the black and gold. Um, I ended up in at Wintrust in 2010. I'll back up. In 08, I received, received a job offer working in liquidation and bankruptcy consulting mm -hmm. um, for a company called Alaris. At the time, business was really good. 08 was not a great time to be in finance. However, there were a lot of companies going out of business. So yeah. I spent a couple years doing that. Um, was introduced to Wintrust in 2010 when they wanted to build out their, their what they call a middle market commercial practice. Um, and was employee number 12 um, in, in that practice. Did that for a few years, really enjoyed it, and then was tasked with this project that is now known as Wintrust Ventures. You have been given a lot of responsibility at a very young age. So obviously, there's something that you showed this company early on that they put a lot of faith in you. Yeah, you know, I was able to be part of a team that built a business, and the CEO saw that and had it. I credit Ed Waymer, our CEO, in giving me this task. He knew that he wanted to play in the high tech venture capital space, but he didn't know how to do it. Um, and he knew he needed someone young um, to figure it out. And that's what I was hired to do. Go does, figure it out for him. Does it give you more street cred with some of the young entrepreneurs? It does. It, it really does. Um, you'd be surprised. It's a very different community than your old school banker, uh, suit and tie, mahogany wood <laughs> kind of deal that you'd see with the rest of one trust. So. We have a saying here at the Cranet School that big ideas don't change the world until they go to market. So you are part of the process in taking things to market. Talk about merging the business side of it with some of the technology that these people are coming to you with. Yeah, so um, I would say that we see a lot of big ideas, frankly, and you're seeing a lot of things that will change the way that you and I interact on a daily basis, whether that's with each other or with anything. I mean, you're seeing a lot in the venture space where millennials don't want literally to see ev anyone ever again. They want everything delivered to their house. Um, yeah. So in terms of technology, you're seeing a lot in the healthcare space as well. There's more doctors per capita in Chicago than there is any other city in the entire United States. So you're seeing um, what's happening with the Affordable Care Act and hospitals having to now provide value on top of value and and also aggregate all that data for the government you're seeing a lot going on in that space what how your doctor visit goes now is very different than how it went 10 years ago um so that's a space that's being disrupted there's a lot of big ideas in that space um you know there's a lot of apps out there that's not necessarily something that we get super excited about but that's also something that gets funded that's changing the community. You have to make some pretty difficult decisions and decisions that have potentially big ramifications for your company. How much is gut? How much is mind? How much is a combination of both? A lot of it's no, 
frankly. Um, you probably, I've seen, in 2015 I saw over 300 deals and we did 15. Um, a big part of it is gut because seed investing is really taking a look at the founder, believing that they can really execute on what they're saying they're going to do. Um, and a lot of it's pie in the sky, right? Every founder says that all they need is 1% of $1 billion and they've got themselves a market. Um, really validating that and believing that, that the world will go that way um, takes takes a little bit of, of diligence, but a lot of it is, would I use this? Would my parents use this? Um, you know, would my sister use this? So uh, on the B2C stuff, a big part of it is just common sense um yeah is there a trait when you have somebody sit across the table from you and they're trying to get you to get interested in their and put some money behind what they're doing is there a trait that you see or a trait that you're looking for in that person that will give you more confidence in him or her groundedness um a lot of founders define success by how much money they're capable of raising. I tend to back founders that want to build a really good sustainable business that's going to be around in 10 years and not necessarily the next Snapchat. Um, that's the commonality in all of the deals that we have, I think. And sometimes if you don't know in horse racing anything about the horse you bet on the jockey, do you have a lot of people coming back for second and third tries when, you, when you're looking at proposals? Um, yes and no. You actually see a lot of the most successful founders will build a company to X, Y, Z level and then leave and build another company. So you see a lot of the best entrepreneurs build two, three, four companies. Um, typically, I've, if I've said no in the beginning, I'm going to find a way to say no at the end. Um, so cookies, bringing that, things like that, that's not going to Yeah, I'm not it. really a sweets yeah, girl. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. You are a runner, though. I am a runner. I am a runner. How do you find time? Um, well, now I have got an associate, so I'm not as busy as I was in, in my Cranes interview. But, um, you know, weekends, nights. I used to run a lot when I was at Purdue. I, um, I loved running through campus when I was here, so. You mentioned Cranes. You were recognized by Cranes, one of the top 20 in their 20s uh, in Chicago. That's that's quite an accomplishment. Yeah, it was uh, surprising to me. Um, it was a nice it was a nice list of people, and we are actually investors in a couple of the companies that um, were also outlined. Packback was on the cover of Cranes, and we are an investor in Packback. Um, but you know, some of those those. 20 year olds have done some pretty incredible things. So it was nice to be on a list amongst some really smart people. Back for a second to the company and what you're doing. You mentioned you have the, the, the medical uh, industry in Chicago or the medical profession is, is huge. Are there any other, other industries that you see a lot of? Is, what's hot? Basically, what's hot in here in early 2016? Um, you're seeing some stuff in ag, actually, which is probably pretty relevant to Purdue that you're seeing. Um, big farms needing technology to, to manage um, miles and miles of, of farmland. You're seeing a lot in medical, um, a lot of m digital marketing. Mm -hmm. So the whole world, every advertiser wants to know where you are at any given moment and what phone you're on and what's your cell phone number and did you look at LLB last week. Um, so you're seeing a lot in digital marketing. That's huge right now. All right, last question for you. We've probably got some aspiring entrepreneurs who are watching this. What tip would you have uh, as someone who's got the purse strings on the other side? What's going to make you more likely to get behind an idea than, than somebody who maybe doesn't have a particular quality? Focus less on how cool your product is and focus more on how you're going to sell it and get people to buy it. Bailey, welcome back. Thank, Thank you. you, and congratulations on what you do. What's next? You said forty under forty, right? Yeah, so you'll something. Flip, you flip the switch just, next year. Once I turn thirty, I guess I've I've got a new goal in life: being cranes forty under forties. So. There's still plenty to go. Yeah. All right, for Bailey Moore, I'm Tim Newton.